So the first question from David Bellow is, what, attra what attracted you to the role at Derbyshire? I think just the project. I think um, it was the right time uh, of my career. I felt it was the right time of my life to you know, uh, get settled again, if you like, after living in hotels for five years. <laughs> um, and it was just the, it was the challenge, it was the project. I, I always had a soft spot for Derbyshire County Green Club. And, um, you know, I wanted to come into something where I felt I could make significant difference, and I guess I, I guess it was the right right project at exactly the right time for me. Keith Bamford asks, "What do you see as the main challenges you'll face in your new role at Derbyshire?" Well, I think the main challenges are just trying to get cohesion, to get a, a brand of cricket, to create a culture that allows players to express themselves, also allows players to become the best they can be, um, and hopefully. If we can get all that ingredient game well, that will give us some sustainable success. So I think those are the massive challenges right now. Chris Seeley asks, what are your realistic expectations for the team this year, both in four-day and limited over games? Yeah, I've been asked that question a lot. Um, for me, winning is everything. Um, I like winning. Uh, I think I'm a winner. Um, but realistically, for where we sit, I want to see progression. I want to see commitment. I want to see attitude. I want to know that every game we play, and, and, and this is something that the, for the supporters, is that I can guarantee you every game we play, our players would have left 100% out on the ground. They would have given it their all. And that for me is me success, because I know that if we can harness that attitude, commitment, skill that they have, we'll win far more than we can lose. And who knows, you get on a roll, you win, you win one game, you win three games, who knows where you can end up. I'm just hoping that we, that we have a, a really successful campaign in all forms. Robert Chambers asks, what kind of wickets will you be asking the groundsman to produce after signing Shan Masood and Sarunga Lakma? Yeah, look, I, all I want is I want good wickets. Um, a good, good cricket wickets, that means that if the batsmen bat well, there is an opportunity for them to score and score big. And if bowlers get enough balls in the right area, they're going to ask enough questions. <clears throat> that's, that, that's, all, that's all we can ask of our groundsmen. Good cricket wickets is, is how I want to play. I think when you start doctoring wickets and that, you're taking it away from, a little bit from the game. And I think for where we're at as a squad now, we need to play on wickets that are good. Um, because once our players start getting some form, you'll see some confidence coming back, some confidence comes back. That translates to performance and hopefully that gives us some success. Cairo White asks, what's your motivation to improve Derbyshire's performances? Oh, my motivation is just to see players perform. I, I coach because I like seeing players develop. I, I, I like seeing, you know, what, what gives me the most satisfaction is seeing something that you've worked on with a player and him getting some success with it and coming out and the joy in his eyes and, the, and, and, and in his face when when it, all, when it all works for him, that gives me my, my most satisfaction. So just wanting to make every player the best player that he can be, that for me will give me a lot of satisfaction. Caro again follows up with, what do you think are the qualities that make a good batsman? I think there's a techniques key, and, 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 and it's been the buzzword that's been going around since Ashes. But, but technique for me is key. There's three things I look at with batsmen. And that's their balance, their weight transfer, weight through the ball, and their hands. I think those are the three most important aspects of batting. Um, but, but solid technique, intensity, good positions, commitment 100% to attack and defence. That's all we're asking our batsmen to do. David Toft asks, will our pathway and youth players be given a chance under you? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Um, I've had a look at, at our talent pathway. I think there's three players there of significant interest. Um, I'd like to see those guys getting as much opportunity as they can. Because um, ultimately, you know, we, we've got a, a really good talent pathway that, that, that runs um, under, under uh, Darren Smith. And, you know, if we, if we have that pathway running and we're not using those players, then there's no point. So I would love to, to give some guys on that uh, pathway opportunity. And, and, and we will certainly be doing that this year. And these onwards are all anonymous questions, but still asked. Um, what's your most memorable game as a coach? Uh, most memorable game? Uh, there's three that, oh, there's four actually that particularly stand out. And 
and, and, and not one is better than the other because they were, they were all for significant reasons. Um, the 4-3-8 game where I was coach of South Africa and we chased down Australia's 434, that, that for obvious reasons was, was pretty significant um, and, and a great day. Um, then winning in Melbourne to become the first a test series, so to become the first South African side ever to win a test series in Australia. That was pretty significant for me. Um, winning at Edge Baston against England to uh, to become the first South African side ever to win in England um, so prior uh, since the dismantling of apartheid. That was that that was also 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 quite quite significant. And then winning the Champions Trophy with Pakistan was uh, was a wonderful day and, and and one that I'll never forget. Who's the most naturally talented player you've worked with? And then also on the flip side, who is the player with not so much necessarily natural talent, but massive improvement underneath you? Yeah, inter interesting question. You know, because I, I can I can reel off the the, the obvious ones: the Jacques Callises, the Michael Clarks. Um, I mean, it's been I've been fortunate enough to Yunus Khan, Ms. Bal Haq. I'm like, yeah, I've been fortunate enough to work with some some really really wonderful players. Um, Graham Smith, Mark Boucher, you know, it's, it, the list is endless. But I think in terms of natural athletic talent, Dale Staines right up there. Um, from a from a from a just a just a athletic point of view, you know, I, I think Jacques Callis was obviously, I think, in my opinion, the best all round cricketer I've ever worked with. I think Dale Staines certainly the most athletic that, that I've worked with. A.B. de Villiers, incredibly athletic as well. I keep, I keep thinking of all these guys. And, um, you know, and, and again, I've been so fortunate to work with, with so many great players. The one that's given me the most significant in satisfaction has to be Bob Azam. You know, seeing a young Bob Azam come into the academy at the, at, uh, in Lahore at the Gaddafi Stadium, um, seeing him work hard, seeing him develop his game, um, and then go on to be in the top five batsmen in all forms around uh, in the world at the moment. Um, he's number one in in in, in uh, ODIs and about number two in 2020, and I think he's number five in, in tests. Um, to see him develop his game to the level that he's done, and know that along the line you've played a you've played a a small role in that um, is very, very rewarding. In your press conference last week, you mentioned players who could make the step up to international cricket perhaps in the next two years. Would you want to expand on who those players are? Yeah, and, and I've said I, I didn't want to, and, and, and I still don't want to, for the simple reason that I, I just think it puts an unrealistic expectation on those two players. My, my, my point of saying that was I do think there's two players, and, 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 and I think they'll they'll get better and better as, as if they stay injury free. Um, but my point around that was the fact that, you know, so many people say Derbyshire are a little old Derbyshire, etc, etc. Um, and the debate around first class cricket in England, um, where significantly I see a very young squad of very, very talented and skilled players with two, with the skills, albeit very young and raw, to perhaps go on and, and play for England. But I wouldn't want to name the names for fear of putting too much expectation on them. How are you finding life in Derby and in England in general so far? Yeah, I'm loving it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. You know, it's, it, it's, it's actually nice to go back to a home now. Um, albeit, you know, still not my own. It's a rented one, but it's very nice. It's very comfortable. Um, but to go to a fixed abode where I've got my... Stuff packed in a cupboard has been has been great, and it, it, Derby's Derby's been brilliant. I've got, got into the culture, watching Derby County a lot, um, so so I've I've really enjoyed it, and I've always enjoyed being in England. I've I've enjoyed touring England. I've loved everything that that um, England brings. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I settled very comfortably here. Speaking about sport, someone asked, "What sports do you like outside of cricket?" I'm a sports nut, so. I can tell you about everything that's going on in the sporting world. My two favourites, I guess, well, the, to play now outside of cricket is golf because, um, like I say, it's it's not an old man's game, but 
it, it is <laughs> like I can still play it to an acceptable level. Um, but I love rugby. I love watching soccer. Uh, you know, big Arsenal fan, supporting Derby County now in the championship. Um, so I, I do like. I, I love. I love soccer. I watch. Watch, watch all the games. Um, rugby. Watch all the rugby. Springboks, obviously, very dear to my heart still. Um, and I'm surprisingly an avid Aussie Rules football watcher. I love. I love Australian Rules. I'm a Fremantle Docker member. I have been a member ever since I went to got to Australia. So going to my 12th year of membership now, the Fremantle Dockers. Albeit that I haven't watched any games over the last while. My my daughters have my tickets and and they watch. But um, I do love Australian rules. You became an Australian citizen a little while back. Do you consider yourself more Australian than South African now? I certainly travel on the Australian passport. I don't think you ever take your roots out where you were born though. So I lived a significant part of my life, you know, up until the age of 37. In, in South Africa. I still have family in South Africa. My eldest daughter's still in South Africa. Um, my dad's still there, um, brothers and sisters. So, uh, you know, South Africa is still very, very, very close to me, but I do travel on an Australian passport. If you weren't a cricket coach, what job do you think you'd be doing? It's oh, an interesting one. Um, you know what, I think I'd probably be a teacher. I think, I think, which is almost coaching, um, you know, it's your communication, working with people, communicating with, um, yeah, with, with young guys or young people, coaching, being involved in sports and yeah, I think, I think possibly, possibly a teacher. What do you think you teach? Physical education. <laughs> Watch, but um, I do love Australian rules. You became an Australian citizen a little while back. Do you consider yourself more Australian than South African now? I certainly travel on the Australian passport. I don't think you ever take your roots out where you were born though. So I lived a significant part of my life, you know, up until the age of 37 in, in South Africa. I still have family in South Africa. My eldest daughter's still in South Africa. Um, my dad's still there, um, brothers and sisters. So, uh, you know, South Africa is still very, very, very close to me, but I do travel on an Australian passport. If you weren't a cricket coach, what job do you think you'd be doing? It's oh, an interesting one. Um, you know what, I think I'd probably be a teacher. I think, I think which is almost coaching, um, you know, it's your communication, working with people, communicating with, um, yeah, with with young guy or young people coaching, being involved in sports and yeah, I think I think possibly possibly a teacher. What do you think you teach? Physical education. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Okay, that was all the questions I had for that. But 